Closure is unobtainable for many because even advantages like wealth or time aren't guaranteed to provide it. However, a trio of Des Moines-based good doers are helping hundreds get that closure. Many of them served our country and were left unclaimed after they died, including one man who's been waiting nearly a century for his final salute. Are you thinking the guys? At a back table inside the Iowa Genealogical Society, this small but mighty group is hard at work, helping put the past to rest. Once we started digging through all of those records, we realized we had some really special stories uh, to be told and on our hands, because some of them don't. Local funeral director yeah, Lene Strovers and genealogist Chris yeah. Nagla and Dennis Allen, who on this yeah. day is also pulling grandpa duty, comprise the yeah. final salute. Since 2018, they've provided just that for nearly 50 veterans who'd been forgotten. These people weren't necessarily left on purpose. Um, there's always a different story of why they're still sitting on the shelf. In urns at local funeral homes. But as word of their work spread, more funeral homes have opened their doors, leading to a record number of discoveries this year, including the oldest one yet. Joseph Chedister, he was a Tennessee soldier who fought on the Union side in a Tennessee Union regiment. Chedister died in Des Moines in 1929 and has been waiting to be rediscovered ever since. I think family should know who family is. Allen is a Navy veteran and retired Des Moines firefighter with a passion for genealogy. He and his girlfriend Nagla got right to work after Strovers learned Chedister was found. So I was reading through everything and I just thought there's, there's no way, you know, that someone died almost 100 years ago was still sitting on the shelf and fought in the Civil War. So our job then was just to confirm that. So we started going backwards and we found stories about him in a newspaper. And as soon as it said he was part of the Grand Army of the, of the Republic, we knew that he was a Northern soldier. The digging continued. They confirmed Chedister grew up in Tennessee. Then he later moved to Redlands, California with the military company he belonged to and that he came to Des Moines, where he met his second wife and later died. She was buried with a previous husband when she passed, and Chedister was left behind. We had it confirmed. Now we just have to get permission to bury him. After identifying a living descendant... I found her on Facebook. Allen messaged Chedister's third great-granddaughter, who lives in the Washington, D.C. area. It took her mere hours to respond. I just messaged her, and I stated this is going to be a weird story, but <laughs> bear with me. And she responded back and basically said, yeah, so how can I help you? And you know, you, you still wonder if you have the right person, but we had a photo of her grandmother and grandfather with um, numbers on them. She went back after I initially contacted her and she said, oh, I found this in my grandmother's paperwork and she sent me the original photo, a copy of it, without the numbers on it. Next September, Chedister will be laid to rest at the Iowa Veteran Cemetery with at least 19 others who had also been forgotten for decades. As I think of myself as the veteran doing it, it, it really feels good because it feels like we haven't left somebody behind. Each one of these men and women, they deserve the flag folding, the gun salute. They belonged, you know, at Iowa Veteran Cemetery. A final resting place Finally, Jedister is one of 20 veterans they've identified since this year's ceremony back in June. Strovers tells me among that group, there are two World War I veterans and one of their spouses, seven World War II veterans and three Korean War veterans. Next year's service will be on September 27th.